In this video, we are going to discuss about structure of human sperm. In our last video, we saw about the spermatogenesis process. So let us discuss about the structure of human sperm. So structure of human sperm. A human sperm is a haploid cell and is a flagellate. Flagellate means it has a tail part which can move, right? And microscopic. in nature. So, human sperm is a haploid cell which consists of 23 number of chromosomes, 23 number of chromosomes and it is a flagellate and it is microscopic in nature and it is a motile cell. It is a motile cell. Right? So, now we are going to see about the parts of human sperm. Human sperm consists of four main parts. One is head and second is neck part, third is middle piece and the fourth is tail part. So let us draw the diagram of human sperm. So in the center, it is a nucleus. Nucleus is oval. And flat the membrane what I am drawing here is the plasma membrane as like all other cells the sperm is also covered by plasma membrane and it is a middle piece and it narrows here and attach the tail part, just tapering at the end. So here we are going to mark the first part which is in the oval in structure. It is called as nucleus. That is the nucleus part. So here we will be writing the description about it. Nucleus consists of 23 number of chromosomes. That is the resultant product of spermatogenesis. At the end of spermatogenesis, you have got 4 number of spermatozoa, which all have 23 number of chromosomes in it. Then, before to this nucleus, it has a cap like structure, it is known as Acrosome. This part we call as acrosome. Here we will be writing this. What is acrosome? And what is the function of it? Acrosome. So acrosome is made of the major part of Golgi apparatus. It is made of are made from Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus. This acrosome is mainly consists of many enzymes. It has many enzymes. Right? What are the enzyme name called? It is very important enzyme. It can be asked in competitive exams. It is hyaluronidase. Now, enzyme name called hyaluronidase. So, it is finishing with the letters A, S, E, which means it is an enzyme. Right? This hyaluronidase enzymes are produced from this acrosomal part. And what is the function of this hyaluronidase enzyme? This hyaluronidase enzyme helps in Dissolving the membranes of ovum. When the sperm fertilizes, for example, I am drawing the diagram here. So, here is an ovum, it has many membranes, and that membranes are also covered by the another membrane called the corona radiata. So, here, when the sperm reaches the female reproductive part, and when it starts to enter this ova, there are many layers. So, all these layers should be dissolved, only then, only then. This sperm can enter into this nucleus part and get fused. So, 
Here, this acrosomal part helps in producing this iodinase enzyme that helps in dissolving all these membranes so that the sperms can get enter into the nucleus part easily. So, function of this iodinase enzyme to dissolve. to dissolve all membranes of egg right so now the head region up to this to this part is known as head region so head region of the sperm consists of nucleus which consists of 23 number of chromosomes in it and it is a flat and oval shaped organelle and before that this nucleus that is anterior to the nucleus part as a cap like structure which is called as acrosome and that acrosome is, is a, nothing but the it is a part of golgi apparatus major part of the golgi apparatus forms acrosome acrosome consists of many enzymes that enzyme helps in that is the main enzyme name is hyaluronidase which helps in dissolving the membranes of egg and the next part here you can see the depression the posterior side of the nucleus has the depression in that depression you can find a centriole and one more centriole is also there in the next region and this part the small part we can call this as neck right so here this the centriole which is found below to this nucleus is called as proximal centriole it is called as proximal centriole then the another centriole is present in the neck region it is called as distal centriole it is called as distal centriole now we will be writing the function here this proximal centriole proximal centriole helps in the division of zygote after the sperm entering into the ova fusion occurs after the fusion occurs in the fertilization process the first zygotic division that is single cell into two cells the first zygotic division is carried out with the help of proximal centriole right so it helps in the division of helps in the division of zygote and the next is our distal centriole so distal centriole helps in the production of axial filament i am going to draw the axial filament here and this axial filament are and to run through the chain part this is we call axial filament so here proximal centriole sorry it is a distal centriole so distal centriole helps in the production of axial filament so this function is axial filament gives skeletal framework skeletal framework to sperm it provides skeletal framework to sperms right okay so up to this is the neck part and the next part is the middle piece so middle piece is present between the neck and the tail region so we mark this as middle piece it is we call middle piece so middle piece consists of middle piece consists of is finally arranged mitochondria consists of finally arranged mitochondria this is we mark it as mitochondria right so this mitochondria provides energy mitochondria provides energy in the form of atp in the form of atp adenosine triphosphate to the tail for its movement right next is this finally arranged mitochondria can be otherwise called as 
Nebenkern. I just write here. It can be otherwise called as Nebenkern. What is Nebenkern? The finally arranged mitochondria in the middle piece is called as Nebenkern. Right? The next is as the tail piece. The fourth part of the sperm is the tail piece. And this tail piece consists of this axial filaments in there. That axial filament is called as axoneme. The axial filament present in the tail part is called as axoneme. And it is a slender and it is a tapering at end. The slender process is tapering. Tapering means it becomes pointed at the posterior end. And when it moves, it gives the slashing movement. Right? Okay. So, up to this is the structure of sperm. So, now sperm consists of four main parts. It is head region, then neck region, then the middle piece and the fourth part is tail piece. So, what is the function of head region? Head region is very important. Right? So, head region consists of nucleus which has the hereditary information of the embryo. So, it has 23 number of chromosomes. Then the before to the nucleus, it has acrosomal part which helps in penetrating the ovum by dissolving all the membranes with the help of an enzyme called hyaluronidase. Then the neck piece. So, neck piece has two centrioles. One centriole is located below to the nucleus. Then that is called proximal centriole. Proximal centriole helps in proximal centriole helps in the division of the zygote. That is first cell division of the zygote. Then it initiates that. Then the second centriole is the distal centriole which helps in the production of axial filament. So this axial filament are arranged in the form of 9 plus 2. What is that 9 plus 2? So when you take the section of axial filament, you can see this axial filament arrangements here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 filaments are arranged in the corner and 2 filaments are arranged in the center. So hence we call this the filaments arrangement of axial filament in the form of 9 plus 2 arrangement. Right? Then we, we discuss about the middle piece. So middle piece is, consists of the spirally arranged mitochondria which is called a nebunker which provides the energy to the tail in the form of ATP. Right? The next is tail part. So tail part is very very important because all the energies are going to be stored in the form of ATP that is, is going to be released to the tail part so that it can move faster. So totally in the 100%, 60% of the sperms are normal in their shape and size and of which 40% of the sperms shows vigorous motility. So 40, 60% of sperms are in normal shape. Means they, they are in normal shape and they move normally. Then 40% of their sperms show vigorous motility. Vigorous means very fast. Vigorous motility. Okay. So up to this, we have completed the structure of human sperm. In the next video, we will discuss about the female reproductive system.